All right, we are back, and I, let's talk about cross-promotional stuff because it's happened in wrestling for a very long time, mm-hmm. and it's been very prominent so far uh, mm-hmm. within the scope of wrestling. WWE's being a lot more open about doing things with other people. Mm-hmm. AEW's been doing it for a while, and I kind of want to look at the benefit and the downfall of each of them because they're really case studies in one way or another. Uh, but let's just at least do a brief history on it because... Okay. It's always been really big when it came yeah. to cross promotional stuff. Now, um, now, believe it or not, WWE has been very instrumental in, in they have a long history of doing cross promotional yep. stuff. Like uh, they're they're recent because you got to think about it too. It's not just cross promotional in terms of other wrestling organizations, but literally WrestleMania was founded upon cross promotional stuff. Right, I like, mean, like Muhammad and, Muhammad Ali was there, mm-hmm. Liberace was there. There were like a lot of big names. They weren't wrestling necessarily, but they were there. I'm talking about more like competition based right. stuff uh, because that once again is also important you had bob Backlund and harley race i don't believe the wwf at that time was part of the nwa but that was a very big match yeah um, but they always did stuff with the nwa until there was that big falling out yeah uh obviously antonio Inoki and muhammad ali had their fight despite what you believe this was an enormous draw yeah uh internationally yeah people don't realize how big antonio inoki was in japan Mm -hmm. crazy big uh lawrence taylor and bam bam bigelow had their match lawrence Mm -hmm. taylor was an nfl player yeah he was not the only one who competed at that year's wrestlemania Uh um but this was the big match yeah and uh what i love is that lawrence taylor said that between wrestling and doing football wrestling was infinitely harder yeah he even says like I couldn't walk after my match with Bam Bam Bigelow, <laughs> and so just keep that in mind. This is a NF- an NFL legend in Lawrence Taylor. Right. Come on, uh, with this one is kind of interesting because uh, Dan Severn did had history here. Mm-hmm. He can so in this picture he has the NWA World Heavyweight Champion in one hand. Yeah. The championship on his shoulder was actually the UFC Heavyweight Champion. Mm-hmm. He was there. Uh, main champion. I don't know what the belt is on the other side. I think that's another UFC. And then there was another promotional belt around his waist. Mm. And he competed in the WWF. Mm. That was a Jim Cornette idea right. uh, to bring in Dan Severn. Dan Severn, I would not want to meet him in the back alley, even though he looks like a 80s porn star in this yeah. because of the mustache. Uh, this guy is incredible. He was a very decorated wrestler. Mm-hmm. And so this was a very rare circumstance in the 90s, especially in the Attitude Era, where they had somebody Mm -hmm. do this because he was so actively fighting and defending the NWA belt and competing in the WWF. So that is really crazy there. I mean, Um, a lot of people do forget that the WWE does a lot of cross promotion. They they really do. It's not like that. That's like a little pigeonhole that you always do. It's a little bit harder for the WWE wrestlers to do something outside, not because they can't. It's because they have, they're on the road 300 days a year. Right. How are you going to find the time? Their, their schedule is busy enough as it is. And yes, they do have exclusive contracts too, but they get paid very handsomely. Right. They have for those for those exclusive contracts. And you also have the WWE marketing machine behind you. You can right. make yourself into a megastar. Yep. Uh, we had the Floyd Mayweather Big Show, I believe. If I'm not mistaken, to this point, this was the largest gate in WrestleMania history because of the Floyd Mayweather Big Show match. Well, it was up until WrestleMania. Well, yeah. yeah. But I'm just saying that to this point, yeah, yeah, this, was, was, yes. uh, this was the largest yes. gate. WWE and TNA's current working relationship. So now we're going to get into modern history because now mm-hmm. this is sort of where it gets a little bit different. WWE has not poached any talent from TNA yet. No. They have not, and you don't think that they have the money to do this. Right. Come on. They allowed Mickey James to make an appearance at the Royal Rumble during the McMahon era. Now, that that, that was, was already. a different circumstance. Right. Well, that, that was already put in the contract. Like, yep. she's like, I want to make an appearance at the Royal Rumble. They were cool with it. That happened. But right. it was it was something very interesting. Mm-hmm. It was like, this is a T- this is a contracted TNA wrestler wrestling in WWE. Right. Especially with their history. That's kind of crazy. Uh, 
And then now we have everything that's happening with and Jordan Grace right. in the Royal Rumble. We had Jordan Grace competing for a women's champion in NXT. Joe Hendry and Frankie Kazarian making their appearances. And now I, I want you to look at all of these things and say, what did TNA get out of it? Because that is an important question. Gigantic ratings for NXT. Mm -hmm. um, viral videos on all social media platforms that TNA has been and can use yeah. because it's their talent. They yeah. have every right to do so. So that's big promotion for them. And then TNA Plus had the most subscriptions for Against All Odds than the last four big events. That's including the Slammiversary. That's including Hard to Kill when they rebranded. That's including um, uh, the, the show that we just did, mm -hmm. Bound for Glory or whatever. Combined. Right. Combined. Find and their ratings are better than they ever have been. And we alluded to this earlier about the potential for there being a bigger TV rights contract for TNA when when the time comes. Now, now the thing too is that um, I think that the WWE is also providing other resources like their live events division. I think is involved in some of TNA's. In some of TNA stuff, um, and, I, and and I don't know, like I don't know if if WWE is is going to buy TNA or if they are like a a party to the contract. Um, there's a lot of backstage stuff that we don't know, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, TNA and WWE working together just seemed like a natural extension, especially since TNA Plus uses Endeavor infrastructure, right? And also with WWE possibly in talks with Tripla A on doing something really similar, mm -hmm. uh, that's also going to be a big benefit for them. Mm -hmm. uh, but here's the thing: this is not the only time that WWE and Tripla A worked together yeah, back they, in the early worked, '90s. Yeah, they worked together in the '90s. Yeah, uh, Pena and Mr. McMahon had a lot of stuff. There, were, I think there was a Royal Rumble when a lot of the people involved in that Royal Rumble mm -hmm. were from Tripla A. Right. Mil Mascaras did a jumping off the top rope to eliminate himself because Mil Mascaras is a selfish prick. Right. But that's still a cross-promotional thing. So WWE, I mean, over 60 years has been fairly open regarding that. Mm -hmm. And this is just within the scope of wrestling. Right. We didn't talk about books or movies or television programs or anything like right. that because I mean, we don't talk about the fact that because we'll or, be here forever right we, you know and we don't talk about the fact that a lot of championships in the wwe right now are held by people who are traditionally non-wrestlers like oh logan, logan paul. paul i mean that's a that is a cross promotion in of itself right and then that's just a net benefit for everybody right so Pat mcafee being on commentary that is a net that that is a cross promotional tactic. Right. Like that is they have always done cross promotional stuff. Exactly. And everything everything that WWE touching right now is just been a net benefit. Yeah. Pat McAfee is one of the biggest sports podcasters in the world right now. Mm -hmm. He just signed a huge deal. You know, and Joe Rogan interviews a bunch of wrestlers all the time. Right. Uh, the Undertaker, he's retired. He's doing his own podcast, yeah. and he still does stuff with WWE, and that's really great there. TNA's doing better than I think they really ever have been, mm -hmm. at least in recent memory, yeah. uh, after 10 years of this. So that's great. If Triple A works with WWE, you don't think that they would be absolutely to the moon, especially given their previous working relationship, right. which we'll cover here soon. It's just been a great thing all the way around for everybody. Yeah. And not and I'm not just talking about with WWE as a company. Look at the wrestlers. Mm -hmm. They they become their own influencers. Right. Becky Lynch is cross promotional now. Seth Rollins is cross promotional now. Ric Flair was back mm -hmm. in the day. The Rock, John Cena, I could go on and on. They all start with the WWE. Now, with all the positives about cross-promotional with wrestling companies, let's talk about some negatives. Because AEW, every promotion that they have touched... Besides TNA, they have poached their talent from. Not just poached their talent, it's been a net negative. Negative, negative, negative. With Triple A in their working relationship with CMLL, AEW had to agree to CMLL 
that any wrestler that is triple A affiliated mm -hmm. could not compete on the same show. And I'm not just talking about the active competitors. Right. If they even are signed with AEW, yeah. Roosh and Ray Phoenix couldn't compete on shows that had CMLL stars right. because CMLL did not want them to. Right. Because they're petty, dumb bitches. Right. So, um, to my knowledge, they've relaxed that. Right. So I'm at the very least happy that they are like, okay, they're they're signed with AEW. Right. Um, but look at what's it. But they did poach their talent. Yeah, they did. Pentagon. I mean, he's making some appearances, but his priority has to be AEW. Yep. But Ray. let's talk about people that they blatantly. So they have Ray Phoenix and Pentagon. Um, but then they also now have Bandito, Commander. Yep. Um. Uh. uh there, there are a few others. Yeah. But let's talk about the biggest victim of this. Yeah, they're, they're a victim. This is a victim. New Japan. Yep. They, their entire. Main event scene pretty much has been obliterated. Yeah, pretty much. Um, the champion, the world champion, is on a guy who was never signed with New Japan and John Moxley, and they're just fighting. There's no net positive. No, their ratings have tanked. The, you mean New Japan? Yeah, this is all New Japan. This yeah. is all New Japan. Uh, they're having a real struggle re. Building stars yep. because there's just nobody to face them that is right. credible enough, and there's not enough of them. Right. So they have just been in a net loss, and they're scrambling. Nobody, to my knowledge, is really watching New Japan. It's been dead in the water. Yeah, and, dead in the water. And and you just look at that, and and the, the what we're trying to get at is that. If you look at, for example, the G1, which is happening right now, and, if, and you look at the G1 a couple of years ago, like there's no comparison as to which one was better. Yeah. It, 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 like had more star power attached to you. I'm sure the matches are fine, but there just seems to be a lack of real star power. Yeah, and it just it's just going to make everything incredibly predictable, mm -hmm. and nobody is going to watch it. Right. And the experiment with New Japan into America has pretty much been on it's, it's, a list. It's, it's failed, but that is not AEW. So no, that no. is New Japan's fault. Um, Stardom is another great example of a company that has just been absolutely eviscerated, and I blame AEW for it. Now, why would you blame AEW for that? Because I think the real reason why it's been eviscerated is because Rossi was fired. Well, Rossi was fired, but then Mercedes Monet left them without any sort of help whatsoever. Right. The working relationship with Stardom and New Japan has been just a total flop. Right. Because that's just not what it is. Uh, Rossi leaving, essentially, and where Tony Khan is celebrating, you don't think that maybe he had maybe just a little bit of pull regarding that? Maybe yeah. he's like... We're not going to work with you anymore if Rossi is in charge. Right. Something there is fishy. Yeah. And here's another positive. WWE working with Mari Gold. Yeah. This is a brand new promotion, and they're making waves, record-breaking sellouts. Mm -hmm. Their shows, to my knowledge, have been very good. Look at Rossi leaving. Yeah. And all of those stars leaving. That huge exodus. Yeah, because people are loyal to Rossi. Yeah. So, and with Tony Khan celebrating, it gives, I, I'm not blaming anybody, right. but I'm putting my finger right here and mm -hmm. saying, why is, why did Rossi, the founder of the company, go? It right. doesn't make sense. Right. Right. So, uh, but let's continue on with the negatives here. Uh, because AEW, and you are wrong about something. You are right that they did not poach any talent from the uh from impact wrestling mm -hmm. but when kenny omega was champion they had the lowest ratings mm -hmm. period period kenny omega had a stranglehold mm -hmm. on that title and thank god christian won it and he was defending it a little more frequently until he dropped it to alexander right. but that was a net negative all the way around because everybody because they were beating everybody and and it was it was known that I mean, it has it has been stated that their relationship did not go as planned. Yeah, it did not go as well, and that came from I believe I believe it's K 
came straight from Scott Demore. Yep. Or maybe it came from Don. McC- I'm not sure exactly. I think it came from Scott Demore because Scott Demore was in charge of that. Time. Right. Um, but he did state that the working relationship just wasn't good. Yeah, because nobody from TNA was promoted on AEW. Right. Who who was going over to AEW no from TNA? Right. Not, not to my direct knowledge. I mean, they took Ethan Page away. Yeah. But Ethan Page was not the biggest star. Alexander turned out to be the big guy. Right. But WWE ain't touching any of them. Right. The, like, only, the only thing that I see is that WWE is luring one tag team from one wrestling promotion. And that is Tama Tonga and Tonga Lo. But we all, we all knew that that was inevitably going to happen. Yeah, that was different. They didn't sit there and grab 20 of the main eventers. Because mm-hmm. grabbed- really, what is New Japan without, without Kazuchika Okada, without Will Ospreay, without... Yeah, Will Ospreay. Uh, you know, Mercedes Monet was signed with New Japan Pro Wrestling. Yeah. She, was, she was a draw for them. Yeah. Uh, you have Jay White. Mm-hmm. What is he doing now? Juice Robinson. Juice Robinson, yeah, another great one. Even though he wasn't main eventer, he was upper mid-card. Yeah. So, um, it's, but CMLL will uh, join the club of seeing how much of a net negative this is going to be. Uh, although, although so far, I think, I think their relationship with CMLL is the best one so far. Um, just because, you know, I, I don't really know exactly how the whole how the whole situation turns out but i kind of i kind of want to see i mean i feel like AEW's learned from their mistakes in the past and are doing a little bit better with cmll do you think that they're going to improve from their past mistakes or do you think think it's gonna can all right i i don't because cmll is a basket case in of itself cmll is a very interesting company and people like oh my god look at the look at the they fill up that uh, building it's like well a they own the building arena mexico (laughs) and two that building has been there for like 60 years, and the company's been around for 91 years. And that, I think, is the reason why I think the CMLL working relationship is going to go a little bit better. It's because there's just so much more loyalty in that company. If CMLL thinks that they're going to get any sort of positive stranglehold, they have. They have. They have done a lot of the. They have done a lot of good things so far. Like CMLL and AEW's working relationship has been very positive i think for both promotions because they are they're both getting featured on each other's shows very frequently very frequently um but the problem is that you're wrong on the at least the AEW side i don't know what the ratings are on cmll oh side, i don't know that either but but AEW has just been hemorrhaging well, they, have, yeah. they have they have been absolutely down in the dumps the entire time it's well, like yeah. what how much of the exposure is he going to get if the working relationship with wwe and triple a goes through do you do, i mean cmll is going to get absolutely obliterated every time so i don't know i mean there's already a decent working relationship with triple on wwe because that's where dragon league came from right but he was already gone right um but you know that's that's about all i have that's about all i have to say about that one yep that was really it um, there but you know i i, I kind of want to at least sort of land on a positive here mm-hmm. before we get into the match the match is really short it's fine um uh, i do agree with you that so far the working relationship with cmll and aw has been positive yeah, it's, I will, it's, been, it's been the best out of every company I've seen so far. Right, but the track record speaks for itself. Yeah. One, how, how one, one, one positive company does not necessarily make up for the three or four right, that have just been it, that have right. just been hurt by right. AEW. And if WWE has that working relationship with Triple A, what's going to happen with that? Right. What's going to happen with that with CMLL and AEW? Right. It's like. This like this is how you really do it, kids. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Uh, it, you know, with everything sort of going back and forth, I thought this was an interesting discussion. Let us know what you think. Uh, if we missed anything, let us know as well. And let's get into this match. All right.